All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, all right. Today, right now, this video, I'm just going to focus on Gigi's comment. And so, to begin, I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to respond to it. Gigi says, Firstly, I am not subscribed to the channel you have an objection with the things I believe are solely from the Bible, not man's word, God's word. I believe in the 1,000 year reign. Alright, let me stop there and say, if you believe in solely in the word of God, solely in the word of God, then how? How do you believe in a 1,000 year reign when it's not mentioned in the Word of God, in the Bible, in God's Word, at all. Not even a single time. And I, I know I've shown it to you, because I show it every single time I do this. Notice in Revelation 20, they lived and reigned with Christ doesn't say Jesus reigned it does not say Jesus reigns a thousand years it does not say it at all it says they lived and reigned with and uh, you know if you don't want to believe what it says then you're believing what man says and I think that's sort of you know that's part of the design of the word of god um if you don't believe in the word of god you're going to be uh you're going to fall for delusions right you're going to fall for false teachings again in verse six they shall be priests of god and of christ and shall reign with him a thousand years no mention whatsoever in Revelation 20 or anywhere else in the Bible about this idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years in fact it directly contradicts I could I could go through numerous versions verses but let me just show you one I want ought to be enough I mean any idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years it's a contradiction to Luke chapter 1, verse 33, when it says, He, speaking of Jesus, shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Not a thousand years, but forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. No end. Jesus reigns forever. It's astonishing, really. Well, why would you, why would you even suggest the idea that he reigns a thousand years? It's a contradiction to the scripture. If it's a, he can't. I mean, just one single verse is enough, but there are multiple, multiple verses, and it's crystal clear. Jesus reigns forever. And I've seen people on one hand say he reigns a thousand years, and then on the other hand say he reigns forever. Well, which is it? Okay. And again, go back to this. Verses 4 and verses 6 in Revelation 20, it does not say Jesus reigns a thousand years. It says they lived and reigned a thousand years. I don't think it matters. I could repeat this over and over for 20 minutes, and people will not see it because they don't want to believe it. We live in a unique time period right now. When Jesus has come, he has performed the works of God and laid down his life and paid for our sins with his own blood and resurrected from the dead and ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us. This is a very unique time period that we're living in. And right now, we that are born of God, born of the Spirit of God, we are in Christ 
and Christ is in us. We are one with God right now. We have eternal life in us right now. We shall never die right now. The second death has no power over us right now. Right now, we are kings and priests unto God right now. Now, when Jesus comes, that's when the judgment of God occurs. That's when the sheep are separated from the goats. That's when the wheat are separated from the tares. It's the end of this world. And when it's the end of this world, everything will be burned up. And there will be no more death afterward. <laughs> I don't know why you'd even suggest anything else. What are you putting your hope into it if you're teaching something else? All right, so let me let me continue. I do not necessarily believe I will be in it. Well, I got news for you. <laughs> We're in it right now. We're in that time period. Right now. Alright, so again, this is the, the why I keep warning people about futurists. They say, oh, everything's going to happen in the future. And they don't realize it's happening right now. It's beautiful. You know, just say, oh, I don't know, it's lazy, is what it is. Beautiful, lazy, whatever, but, no, just, I don't know, I don't understand the verses, so, just, man, eh, it's going to happen in the future. I don't know about the Antichrist, going to happen in the future. Everything happens in the future, because I don't understand it. No, no, just believe what the Word of God says. That's all you have to do, I mean, that's the key. To understanding the Bible is believing. It's faith. It's always been about faith. Okay. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, let's see, where are we at? I also don't believe that it will be the people with the Lord having sex. Definitely not. They are blessed and holy. Well, <laughs> that's a start. That's a start, really. If you don't believe they're having sex after Jesus returns, that's a start. If you don't believe they're having, that, if you don't believe that um, people will be having sex during the thousand years, <laughs> that's a problem. That's a problem because... The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. So you have to have people having children. Okay? They have to be having children during this thousand years. Because when Jesus comes, he comes in the clouds of heaven. It's mentioned over and over all throughout the Bible. And clearly today people are having children. <laughs> people are getting beheaded during this time period for being a witness of Jesus and for the word of God All right, and, and then also during this time period you have the beast the beast will be done away with when Jesus returns when it's the judgment of God when it's the great day of the Lord all that's going to be done away with. So, all right. So let me um, let me share something with you. All right. So this idea, I, I you know, I think people are afraid to talk about it because if they talked about it, they would be exposed for, and it would they would be revealed for how wicked they truly are. These people that teach 
there will be sex after Jesus returns. The most wicked and vile people on the earth today. All right. <laughs> And your people aren't seeing it because they don't trust what God says. They want to trust what these perverts have to say. Okay. Now, I don't want you to be deceived. So consider this. Listen. because it touches on a topic that people already have strong opinions about. In this chapter, it describes a time when Satan is taken, bound, and put into a place called the Abyss. This is meant to ensure that his influence won't bother the Tribulation Saints who went through seven tough years. Right, hold, up. hold on a second. Now, first of all, there is no mention of a seven-year Tribulation period anywhere in the Bible at all. Not ever. Not a single time. I can't show you a verse to deny or to, you know, just, I can't share, I can't show you something that's, it's not there. There's nothing to show because it's not in the Bible anywhere. It's completely imaginative. Does not exist in the Bible at all. It's unbelievable, but you keep repeating it. You think it's there. It's not there. It's not anywhere in the Bible at all. It's lunacy. The idea is, can you imagine life without Satan tempting anyone? The 1,000 year period mentioned, often called the millennium, is portrayed as a sort of paradise. Only believers get to experience it, living peacefully for the entire time, even having kids. Boom, right there it is. Think about that. What this guy is teaching, and this is, uh, you know, this is the thing that, I want you to think about it. all these people, all these people, I mean, there's a lot of them, do not want to touch that subject, but they want to suggest it. They want to suggest it, but they don't want to go get into it. This idea that Jesus returns, and then after he returns, people are still having sex. Okay. They don't want to get into it. <clears throat> I think if they did, they'd, they'd get their rear ends kicked by the Bible. Okay. Well, I guess we can go. Uh, where should we go? If I could remember anything, and I can't, I can't remember nothing. Oh, 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 I can't remember nothing. Okay, so in 1 John chapter 2, I really don't think, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I've spent a lot of time thinking about these verses, what they mean. There's no doubt in my mind, this is... God speaking to us, to me. When it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I would encourage you to take some time to, to consider what that means. I mean, it's real simple, really. Because this world is coming to an end. We read about that in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. When Jesus describes the end of the world, he's asked specifically, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So if you know this world's coming to an end, why cleave to it? Why love the world and the things that are in the world, right? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. 
and the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. When Jesus comes, it is the end of the world. The world will then pass away. It's the end of the world. Therefore, the world passes away. And the lust thereof. So when Jesus comes, it'll be the end of people having children. Okay? <laughs> what in the world are you guys teaching when you teach this idea that people will be having children after Jesus returns? The idea is, can you imagine life without Satan? Think about it this way. <laughs> okay, so these people are teaching that they're going to have children after Jesus returns. It's just another way of saying they're going to have dirty, stinky sex. Okay. Because that's what's required to have children. And dirty, stinky sex is directly related to lust. Without lust, there is no sex, and without sex, there's no children. So you think about it in the in extreme, in the most extreme sort of way. It that's how I do it in order to better understand it. There is no more dirty, stinky sex after Jesus returns. There are not people having children after Jesus returns. There's no more kinky sex after this world comes to an end okay period no matter it, no matter what man, no matter you can get everybody to believe it it's not going to happen this world's coming to an end it don't matter the bible is very clear about that why dirty your mind why pollute others minds when you should know full well that this is part of the impurity of this world and we are putting our hope into a pure world. A world that will never come to an end. All right, listen. Satan tempting anyone. The 1,000 year period mentioned, often called the millennium, is portrayed as a sort of paradise. Only believers get to experience it, living peacefully for the entire time, even having kids. Only believers will be living in paradise. What, only believers are going to be having sex? All right, so I'm not going to listen to any more of this, but, um, I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, can't you guys figure it out? So after Jesus returns, you got only believers having sex? Or are you going to have also unsaved people living when Jesus returns. Okay, think about that scenario. If there are unsaved people living after Jesus returns, then why did Jesus come in the first place? If people are going to be having sex after Jesus returns, why did Jesus return? If people are going to be ha living and dying after Jesus returns, why, do, why does Jesus return? You can't have death and dirty, stinky sex after Jesus returns. It's totally contrary to the Word of God and to everlasting life. All right. So where are we at here? Okay, so what I'm saying, GG, is you're, if you understand that there's not going to be people having sex after Jesus returns, then you're making progress, okay? You're making progress because you're right about that. That's these people that are 
driven by their own lust. Those, what I call scoffers, they they call themselves Christian, don't they? A whole lot of people out there call themselves believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet, they mock and scoff the Word of God. And that's what these guys are doing. Okay? And I don't want you to follow them. And I don't want them to make a fool out of you. And they've, look, they've made a fool out of me. And that's why I get so fired up about this. All right, so two things to consider, okay? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. All right, so these people are trusting in their works, in their own works. And they are not trusting in the work that has already been done for them. If you have to add anything to the work that has already been done for us, then you're not saved. In other words, you don't believe in Jesus at all because he has done it all. And so there's a whole bunch of people out there today that do not trust that Jesus has done everything. Everything. We are 100% at the mercy of God. 100%. We don't have any control over whether we're saved or not saved. No control. God is in control of it all. All of it. We have no control. Go and learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Go and learn what that means. Alright, and then so let's go to Matthew 24, which is amazing. It's amazing, really. It's amazing because Jesus is asked specifically, What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And the very first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ. Many will come in the name of Jesus, saying Jesus is the Christ. And they'll sing the songs, and they'll dance the dance. And they'll say Jesus is the Christ, and shall deceive many. <laughs> That's what we got in the world today. It's unbelievable. It's incredible it's amazing it's astonishing that it's happening right before our eyes and what the, i think in my opinion i mean it's pretty obvious people are trusting on what man says and not believing the very plain scripture and this is one example of a great of a great place in the bible where so many people can read the same thing and imagine, oh, that's Jesus reigning a thousand years. Can you even read it? Can you see what's on the screen? Can you see those words? All right, can you see it? If you can't see it, then there's a veil upon your heart because it's plain as day. They, not Jesus, but they, which follow Jesus. They lived and reigned with Christ. Not Christ reigning a thousand years, but they living and reigning with Christ. It's a huge difference. 
huge difference. It's it, it's the difference between the a truth and and a lie. It's a lie to say Jesus reigns a thousand years. It's not mentioned in the Bible anywhere, not a single time. Not in Revelation 20, nowhere else in the Bible. In fact, the Bible says Jesus reigns forever. It's unbelievable, but it's amazing. It's incredible. It's phenomenal, really. That so many people will say Jesus reigns a thousand years. They'll even read the verse and be blind to what they're reading. They, they'll, be, they'll be deaf to what they're reading. They can't even hear the words that come out of their own mouth. It's amazing. But again, I think that's by design. If you don't have faith in the Word of God, you're not going to be able to see it. Okay? It, re it really is a phenomenon. And um, it, it just, it, to me, it's just fascinating. It's incredible, really, how we are witnessing this phenomenon today. All right, in Second Corinthians 3, But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Now, there are numerous verses that directly correspond or relate to this verse here. That even unto this day when the Moses is read, the veil shall be upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So when we believe, when we have faith in God and believe the word of God, then the veil is taken away. I'll just give you one example of something to consider if you're serious. In Isaiah 6, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. All right, and so, and so also, uh, oh, we get a parallel. Yeah, let's see if I can remember. Let's do it this way if I can find it. We get a parallel in Matthew 13 and in Luke 28. All right, parallel to that, and it all relates to what we just read. And oops. In 2 Corinthians 3, right? Alright, so let me continue. Okay, 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 definitely not. They are blessed and holy. And, okay, so what I'm saying, GG, is that you're blessed and you're holy right now when you are born of God. Right now and forever. Okay? Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Alright, so what is the first resurrection? That's a good question, right? Well, Jesus plainly... Yeah, let's do it this way. Jesus plainly says... I mean, it could not be more plain. He could not be more direct... He could not say it any more simpler. He says to Martha, I am the resurrection. So what's the first resurrection? You think there's somebody before him? You think there's somebody after him? No, he is the resurrection. Jesus is the res resurrection. He says, I am the resurrection and then you want to stand there and say no he's not the first resurrection well then you're a liar you're calling Jesus a liar but you it's you right it's you that is the liar Jesus does not lie Jesus is the resurrection. And let's consider this. The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part. 
we are partakers of his resurrection. When we are born of the Spirit of God, we are partakers of his resurrection. We are partakers of him. He abides in us and we abide in him. We are one with the Lord Jesus. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. Okay? Now, let me continue. They shall be priests, God shall reign with him with us. So you're right. They're not having sex. And people that say that are flat wrong. Thing is, though, the resurrection in this passage has not happened. What are you talking about? Jesus hasn't resurrected? Is that what you're saying? So you're right, they're not having sex, and people that say that are flat wrong. Thing is, though, the resurrection in this passage has not happened. What are you talking about? Jesus hasn't resurrected? What are you talking about? Okay. Who has been resurrected and is currently reigning? Not believing, as you claimed. Reigning? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Not believing as you claimed, reigning, nobody. Nobody? Jesus has been resurrected. I'm not sure what you're saying here, kiddo. Nobody. Why are you so insistent on this while claiming others aren't saved if they don't go along with you? All right, so, okay, here we've got a definition of reign, to possess, to exercise, to vein power. I don't think we need to, I don't think it's rocket science here. The fulfillment in Matthew has not happened. Nobody has been resurrected and reigning with Christ. This could not be more obvious. Uh, <laughs> wow. Wow. I am the re So Jesus is not the resurrection. The fulfillment in Matthew has not happened. Nobody has been resurrected. Jesus hasn't been resurrected. That hurts. That hurts to hear you to to read to read that. It really does. It really does. So now what do you know, what do I do now? What can I do now to convince you that Jesus has resurrected. I, I'm, you know, so like in Matthew 24, or 22, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that what you're saying? Is that the same thing? Nobody has been resurrected and reigning with Christ. Is that part of it? <clears throat> is that what you're saying? Is that nobody has been resurrected um, and reigning with? It? Are you so? You're saying that the end of the world hasn't come yet? Because that's when we are resurrected. Right? I mean. That's 
Yeah, that should be pretty clear. I mean, you go to like 24. I mean, Matthew 24. Right. Well, you go to a couple places, I guess. So Matthew 24, at the end of the world, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and the angels gather together his elect. That's our. That's when we are lifted up into the air with the Lord, right? That's that's the moment, right? That's when we are resurrected. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is all throughout the Bible, is it not? So you go like, for example, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So when Jesus comes in clouds of heaven, we are lifted up in the air, we that are saved. We're lifted up in the air. That means we're resurrected. Okay. And again, First Thessalonians uh, chapter 4. For when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, then the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. The dead in Christ means they're going to come up out of, the, out of the dust of the earth. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. This is when we are resurrected at the end of the world. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and the angels gather together the elect. That's the end of the world. All right. In uh, First um, Corinthians 15, all right, it says, Behold, I show you mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of, the, of an eye, at the last trump, at the end of the world, right? This is the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's the end of the world. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. The dead shall be raised incorruptible. The dead shall be raised incorruptible. The, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth, this is the same thing, man. Same moment in time first the dead in Christ shall rise the same moment in time and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we those of us that are born of God specifically mentioned here first the dead in Christ then we which are alive and remain we shall be changed okay so we'll go from incorruptible we'll go from or i'm sorry excuse me we'll, we'll go from corruptible and we'll go from mortal to incorruptible into immortal okay and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory so you cannot have unsaved people living after this moment in time therefore you cannot have sex after this moment in time okay it's pretty simple stuff man it really is nobody has been resurrected and reigning with Christ so I don't know why you're tying reigning with Christ with the end of the world okay so you go again go back to Revelation 20 they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years in your scenario okay let's just go along with it in your scenario Jesus comes back all right and then you're resurrected okay and then you reign with Christ for 1,000 years. See, I don't put my hope into that scenario at all. I don't, I, you can take that idea and flush it down the toilet. I don't want no part of it. None at all. That thousand years is nothing but a flash in time. What I want, what I hope for, 
what I dream about is a life that never ends. Eternal life. Everlasting life. This thousand year uh, bonus period or whatever it is that these people are teaching. It's a trip to the bathroom is what it is. It's nothing. I don't want no part of it. Nothing. I don't want nothing to do with that idea. All right. Um, so right, and, and not only that, okay, so think about this. All right, Jesus doesn't condemn you. I'm not condemning you, but by your own words, you're suggesting or saying that you do not reign with Christ right now. Okay, so by your own words, you're not saved. By your own words. I'm not saying it. You're saying it. When you say that you don't reign with Christ, when you say, I'm not reigning with Christ, that's the same as saying, I'm not Christ. I'm not one of Christ's people. I'm not one of God's people. I'm not saved the same thing if you're not reigning with Christ right now you're destined to burn in hell so I would encourage you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ strongly encourage you what's more important really All right, so again, you know, this is a great verse, 2 Peter 3, verse 8, but it has absolutely nothing to do with Bible prophecy at all. I mean, have you ever even read the chapter? This is amazing. How many times people will point to this verse? It is. It's amazing. Speaking of which, um, hold on a second. Oh, speaking of which, uh, it's amazing. It's an amazing verse. And, um, you know, speak amazing, amazing, amazing grace. Have you ever heard that song? <laughs> amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a rich like me. I can't sing. I apologize. Okay. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. Be not ignorant. <laughs> wow. Be not ignorant. This is talking about what it is for God. All right. So to us, it seems like, man, God's taken forever, man. When's he going to come and put an end to this wicked world? And that's what we want, right? Those of, us that, those of us that are born of God, we want this to come to an end. And we know it's coming to an end. Hey, but, you know, while we're here, we, we ought to make the best of it and do what we can to bring others to know the Lord Jesus Christ and to know that God is real. Okay? Make the best of it. I mean, why not? We're going to live forever anyway. So we're going through trouble, troublous times. Okay? Big deal. Okay? We, we're enduring pain and suffering every single day. Okay? Big deal. Who cares? We know that we got eternal life. So, it's not all that whole. I mean, it's, it, it is what it is, right? So, I might as well just make the best of it and, and be patient. Really, and really. Yeah, big deal, you know, big deal. Because we know that there's a whole nother world that waits for us. Right? We can relax and just put our trust in the Lord. You think about what Jesus had to endure and you think about what we're having to endure, really, truly, what we're going through is 
it's not as it's not as rough as what uh, Jesus had to go through I don't think in my mind it's uh, what he had to endure was uh, you know maybe there's comes a time when, when I have to endure what he endured but uh, it you know it is what it is right and I don't worry about it because I know I have eternal life no matter what happens in this world I have eternal life okay now to God to God he can look at a thousand years as a day and a day is a thousand years he can magnify a day or he can hit the fast forward button and see it all in a moment right he can he can slow it down to half speed or he can fast forward it to four times speed whatever you know that that's what this verse is teaching us okay so the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Okay, to us it seems like, oh, it's taking forever. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. God is in control. God can see the beginning from the end, the end from the beginning. He can see it all. All right? He can see it in a flash of time. He can magnify it. He can pause it to, you know, what, one frame every 10 seconds or whatever you know he can slow it down he can speed it up he can see it all okay so relax the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance but the day of the Lord is will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So when Jesus comes, that's it. Everything's going to be fried. Fried to the sky. Everything is going to be burned up. The works also. So that would include your little kinky sex parties going to be burned up or they will not exist anymore all the perversions all the wickedness all the evil death sorrow suffering all of it is going to be burned up the whole thing and from that moment moving forward we have eternal life in our immortal body in our incorruptible body and death will be swallowed up in victory wow I mean that's if you're not putting your hope in that what, what are you doing putting your hope into a, a toilet break you go to the toilet for a little bit and then you're done that, I mean, is that it? What are you saying? Now, I know you're, you're not making this up on your own. You got this from somebody. You didn't get it from the Bible. You're quoting the Bible, but you're quoting it completely out of context and with ignorance. And I think that's really one of the big factors for why that's in there. Be not ignorant. Yet people are ignorant. It can say it, be not ignorant, and people are ignorant. Okay? It's, it's pretty interesting to me when people quote that do you even know what 2 Peter 3 is talking about because if you did you wouldn't be arguing this idea of Jesus reigning for a thousand years after his return it's I mean what can you not read this the day of the Lord when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and the earth and the works that are therein shall be burned up. What is it that is so hard to understand? So this 1,000 years here is in regards to the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He's, 
It seems like he's taking a long time, but he, look, he doesn't want anybody to perish, right? So there's a reason why, to us, it might seem like he's taking a long time, okay? But really, it's a flash in the pan. It's a, you know, just a flash in time, right? Zephaniah, chapter 1. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastes greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. All right, with all due respect, there's no mention of Jesus reigning a thousand years in that verse. Okay? It's not there. Not there at all. I could read that again, and it still won't be there. Okay, Matthew 7, many will say to me, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Okay, let me see here. No, nope. no mention of Jesus reigning a thousand years after he returns in Matthew 7, verse 22, either. It's just not there. I could read it again, and it still won't be there. Look, I, I take this stuff pretty serious. Right. Second Peter chapter three, oh, uh, uh, verse ten. Okay. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Okay, so again. Not only does it say, or does it not say, that Jesus reigns a thousand years after his returns, it says everything on the earth, all the elements and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Therefore that nullifies, destroys this idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years after his return. Completely destroys it. Many who think they will be in the millennial kingdom are in for shock. After this 1,000 year reign, the rest of the dead are judged. Again, there's no mention of a 1,000 year reign anywhere at all. Go back. Revelation 20. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It does not say Jesus reigns a thousand years. It's not there. It's not in verse 4. It's not in verse 6. It's nowhere found in the Bible at all. <clears throat> I could sit here and study it. I could, I, I could sit here and stare at this for, for hours. And it will not pop up on the screen. I could... You know, <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Why is this? Why are you not seeing this? It's right there. They. Not Christ. They. They. I don't know how you're not seeing it. Just because it's been... Is it because it's been echoed or... Just repeat it in your ear. Oh, Jesus reigns a thousand years. Jesus reigns a thousand years. Jesus reigns a thousand years. And then you think, oh, man, they let reign because of the, oh, Jesus reigns a thousand years. See, so you, you skip what you're reading and you replace what you're reading with, oh, Jesus reigns a thousand years. Even though that's not what it says. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And of course, this is the problem when you don't believe what it what it says when you don't believe that's coming directly from God you're replacing what it says with what's in your imagination I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense to me because it's right there in front of your face and you still can't see it it's incredible it's phenomenal really 
And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the book, I'm sorry, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Revelation 21, verse 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And be their God. Then as you correctly state the holy city. And God himself the father. Will be with men. It's that simple. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean it really is. The whole thing is simple. But when you. Contradict the word of God. It makes it not simple. And this idea. That you're not reigning with Christ. Isn't, I mean, if you really are saved and you're making that claim, you're in error. Okay? Now, if you're saying that you're not reigning with Christ right now and you're not saved, then you're not in error. You're, you're stating the truth. You're not saved. You're not reigning with Christ. You're not saved. That's true. But if you are born of the Spirit of God, then for sure you're reigning because He reigns. You're reigning with Christ. You are a partaker of His resurrection. Okay. Let's see. here. There was one thing that I think I was going to say. I was going to show, I should say. Okay, yeah, that, I mean, this should be enough right here, right? And came out of the graves after maybe, maybe, um, maybe a better place would be this after his resurrection. Okay, so after his resurrection, if you could just focus on that for a second and understand that Jesus resurrected from the dead, there's no doubt about it. Jesus himself says, I am the resurrection. Okay, so Jesus has risen from the dead. Okay, and there shouldn't be any doubt about it. So when we read here in Matthew 20, and it says, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Right, that's us that are born of God. We are partakers of his resurrection. It's crystal clear. It's simple. Now, right now, I mean, go about, okay, think about this. On such, the second death has no power. All right, think about that. And then we go back to John 11. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. The second death has no power. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over us that are born of God. All right. All right, so. Go back here. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Who are priests of God right now? It's utterly foolish to say that nobody is a priest of God and of Christ right now. Utterly foolish and completely ignorant. Is that, am I being too strong? Right, so consider this scenario. So you're saying that, that the people of God were priests of God in the Old Testament, but now they're not the priests of God today? There are no priests of God today? Somehow we went from having priests of God in the Old Testament to now there are no priests of God but then in the future there will be priests of God so why aren't there priests of God right now you know what I'm saying it's nonsensical it's nonsensical and it's contrary to the Word of God okay so in Exodus 19 now therefore if ye 
will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. So they were a kingdom of priests back in Exodus 19. And what do you want to say that, uh, no, they're not. They're nobody's, nobody's a priest today. I, I don't even, I can't even fathom. I mean, just, just take some time to think about it. Okay, that's all. Just take some time. Just relax and consider, ponder the word of God you know meditate on it in first peter chapter 2 verse 9 but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood oh but i thought you said that you're not a priest of god you're not a, you're not a priest of god right now then you're not one of god's people i mean the children of israel way back when they were priests of God way back when. And right now, we that are born of God, we're priests of God right now. That hasn't changed. And so when we go to Revelation 20 and it says, they shall be priests of God in Christ. That's talking about right now. Right now we are priests of God and of Christ. <laughs> and what's Revelation chapter 1 say? Did you skip over chapter 1 and go straight to chapter 20? Or have you read any of it? Verse 6, and have, talking about Jesus, has made us kings and priests unto God. And his Father. Right now. Jesus Christ, the first begotten of the dead, who's the first resurrection? Well, come on, man. You can't figure this out. You don't believe this? You don't believe Jesus Christ is the first begotten of the dead? You don't believe he's the first resurrection? What well, what do you think you were going to be the first resurrection? Is that what you thought? You thought that was you? No, just be honest. I mean, you, you thought you were the resurrection? The first resurrection, the resurrection. Is that is that what you're thinking? I mean, just be honest about what you think. But, but think. Okay. Think. <laughs> it, it couldn't be more obvious. Right now... Right now, Jesus has risen from the dead and ascended to heaven. He has washed us from our sins in his own blood. That's happened. That's happened. That's happened. And that's true right now. Right now, he has washed us from our sins in his own blood. Right now. Forever and ever. Right now. Right now and forever and ever. And has made us kings and priests unto God. Right now. Right now. We are a kingdom of priests. We are a holy nation. We are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Right now. If you're not part of this priesthood, then if, you're, if you say that, if you say I'm not part of the priesthood, then you're saying you're not one of us. You're not saved. That's what you're saying by your own words. I'm not condemning you. The Lord Jesus does not condemn you. You are condemning yourself by your own words. All right. Okay. All right. Okay.
Okay, so uh, I'll just end it right there, and uh, because I I kind of got a long, right? I tried to explain it in words, and uh, uh, sometimes it, you know I want to help. I want to help Gigi. I want to help her realize that she is royalty. She is set apart from the world. We're in the world, but we are not of the world. We are special. We are unique people, a peculiar people. We are not like them. We are saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever, right now. We're set apart, okay? We are a chosen generation right now. We reign with Christ right now. Right now. And when he comes, we will be lifted up to meet him. And the whole world will know it. The whole world is in deception right now. But when that day comes, the whole world's going to know it. Alright, and this world's coming to an end, and all them that are in the world, it's going to happen. Okay, no need to worry about it. It's going to happen. Alright, so just enjoy this day. Just be thankful for what you have this day. It's not eternity. Uh, in, in the sense that we're not going to be in pain for all eternity. It's, that aspect of life is coming to an end. We're not going to have sorrows for all eternity. That aspect of life is going to come to an end. Alright, so take comfort knowing that Jesus is coming. It could be today. It could be the day after you die. But rest assured. He's coming.